Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. So the housing market seems to be holding its own, which is not something that a lot of people was saying was going to take place. That once the interest rates would go up, that we would see a significant downturn in the housing market, in especially with home prices. But that's not exactly what we have experienced here over the last two years when the interest rates started to move up when the Federal Reserve started raising their Fed funds rate. Now, really, the interest rates on the mortgages when the Federal Reserve started to raise rates shot up instantly and really plateaued off right away. Now, it leads me to believe that the market demand for mortgage-backed securities has the interest rates somewhat pegged where they are. Now, there's going to be volatility and fluctuations within that market, but over the last few months, they really have stayed pretty consistent to the upper range of seven to eight percent, depending on where you're looking and you know what kind of mortgage you end up with. So when we think about like what's occurring right now, and we think about the credible threat theory. Now, if you follow my channel for any length of time, you've heard me talk a lot about the credible threat theory. But the credible threat theory is, in a nutshell, is basically when the forward guidance or the signaling or the narrative is pushed out there that guides the people's perception that then gets them to move in a way that is more in line with what the federal reserve and the governments want but they then they but they don't really have to act the governments and the fed don't and a perfect example of this is the one that i always use is the corporate debt lending facility where the federal reserve in conjunction with the treasury was able to set up funding for this corporate debt lending facility put out the narrative that they were going to be buying a bunch of corporate debt and then people poured into that corporate debt being able to fund all these corporations with low interest rates loan and they really didn't have to do anything at all the market took care of business that's really the credible threat theory in a nutshell now when we apply the credible threat theory to what's going on right now we have to kind of stand back for just a minute and just look at what's going on with these mortgages right the mortgage interest rates how many are being written and the prices that are taking place within the mortgage or within the housing units themselves so now when it comes to mortgages if you think about how many mortgages that are being created right now okay there is a very small amount of those now there's two reasons that there would be a small amount one people are choosing not to take out loans because the interest rates are high or there could be a freezing of the financial markets where it makes it very difficult to get a loan now it may not be an exact freezing but the constraints within the lending you know regulations themselves make it very difficult right to the point that it makes it almost impossible people want the loans but they can't get them here they have the access to the loans but then they're choosing not to get them right these are two different scenarios that are creating a situation in which that there is less loans right whether the people are choosing it or it's just hard for them to get the pool loans is small right? and then you have on the other side of that prices now the results of one or the other of these would then fluctuate the prices right that would make sense so if you look at it from just a second and you think about it we don't have a freezing of the financial markets not like we did back in you know the great financial crisis where everybody was like oh my gosh what's going on here right what we have is access to financing but it's just not necessarily you know desirable right so what happens people sit in a position in which that they hope that the conditions get better right that's on one side the other side of it is they know conditions suck and they're not even touching it, right? So if you have a freezing of the markets, right? A freezing of the financial conditions and make it, or the regulations are so difficult or for whatever reason it's scaring people and they cannot get these loans, then the idea of pricing out houses on an elevated position isn't gonna be like in the cards. Right. What that's going to be mean is that once you start having a fear of not being able to get a loan, the price of homes are going to start coming down to entice the buyer because he's going to be like, no, man, it's like freezing in markets. I won't be able to get it. There's problems, whatever. If you have that kind of fear going on, then you're going to have the house prices fall. 
But if you're in a position that goes, no, the conditions suck right now, I understand, but they're going to get better and I'm looking for that to be the conditions coming into the future. I'm hoping, right? So you got one end is hopium and the other one is fear. And that's really what's taking place right now is mass hopium injections that take place. Most of the articles that you read out there are talking about how is this the bottom of the housing market, how, you know, the buyers are there, how the home, you know, or the whatever, the uh, demand for, for homes is like enough that keeps the prices from falling. You know, however you want to look at these articles that are out there, it's just that when it comes to the idea of actually bringing the prices down, it's really the perception of the people and what it is that they feel that's coming into the, excuse me, coming into the future and whether or not they're eager to sell their house or not. If you have a condition, in, again, if you have a condition in which that you think that things are going to improve, why would you drop your house now? You can wait, right? Wait a few months. Maybe the interest rates will get better and people will be willing to buy back at this price again. And that's really what we, what I feel that we are experiencing today. You know, you think about like, some of the conditions that we have here in the United States are far different than than conditions that take place in other nations. Like people ask me all the time about the Canadian real estate, right? And what can happen there. And I'm go to like read articles on it because I'm thinking five year, you know, loans because they have to readjust their mortgages every five years. And I'm thinking that is very strange. It's hard for me to wrap my head around how on housing market is going to operate when you have to adjust your loans every five years. And then I come across this article, I'll leave a link down in the description for it. It's to an article where some of these loans, they don't adjust the payments. The payment stays the same. It's the length of time. <laughs> and some of these loans are stretching out 50, 60, even out to 90 years. 90 year loans on account of the interest rates going up and the payments that they're locked in on. That's insane to think. Like, that's never going to get paid off. There is no way in the world that you will ever own your house if that was the situation. Of course, at some point, the interest rates will come down, right? You know, I would only assume that they're going to come down. They're not going to come down as quickly as a lot of people are thinking they're going to come down, right? And the moment that you start seeing the hopium fade about the interest rates coming down, you're probably going to start seeing the housing market start to come down as well. Now, how significant that is, who knows? But I would just keep an eye on that hopium because that's really the only thing that's keeping this housing market afloat right now. I mean, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Uneducated economist, you let me know.